Fire and Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey, everybody. It's time for another episode of What's On Your Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. I'm your co-host, Kathy Gruver. And I'm Jason Mefford. Hey, we thought we'd do another one of these episodes that you're going to hear every so often about what's on your desk. Yes. Because we had such a fun time last time doing this, so we just got to do it again. We so did. And I'm going to have to start gathering more. I have so much crap on my desk. Uh, Not crap. Very meaningful thing. Some of it's crap. I'll be honest. It's some of it's crap. But uh, yeah, no, I thought it was a great idea and it sparked a lot of conversation. And I had a friend who used to say that she could walk into anybody's house and by looking at the first three things she saw, know everything about that person. And she was pretty damn good at it, I have to yeah. say. So, you know, what is your workspace? What is your desk? What are those things that you surround yourself by saying to those people? What is it saying to you? What ego state, what personality, what are you bringing out in yourself by what you're surrounded by? So mm-hmm. I love these episodes. So I'm really excited about it. So, Well, and you can learn a lot um, from people by the things that they have around them. Because it's interesting that you bring that up about your friend. Because, you know, in my professional career, I interview a lot of people, you know, in, in auditing and kind of in that environment, building rapport, trying to learn a little bit about people, I would, I would use this technique as well to be able to kind of understand and know about the person, to be able to know how to communicate with them, learn a little bit more, build that rapport with them. So it's, it's, it's even funny, like um, I was chatting back and forth with a friend, you know, cause I just, I just kind of had this feeling like maybe she wasn't having a great day. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just sent her a quick text, you know, and, um, and she came back and said, oh, you know, I'm scared of your Vulcan mind tricks. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, Vulcan mind tricks. I know she's a Trekkie, not a right. Star Wars geek, right? So it's like, okay, because if she was a Star Wars geek, she would have said your Jedi, Jedi mind, mind tricks, tricks right? Okay. So just even picking up on that, I kind of knew or learned something more about her, right? which, you know, again, right. makes it makes our, our relationship deeper, if you will, and I learn more about her. So, yeah. Absolutely. But, but, but also, to your credit, what that says about you is that you're present with that person. You're aware of your surroundings. And remember, a couple episodes back, we did that listening of first person, second person, third person. And the third yep. was taking into account the entire group, the entire environment of what's going on. So when you walk into a person's desk and you want that promotion, you want that sales call, you want that, what are you seeing around that you can go, oh, it was, is that you and your wife at Bora Bora? Oh, I've been there too. I've always wanted to yep. go. You know, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to BS people. You don't want to make shit up. You don't want to be that guy. Like, eh. I don't know what that was. But, um, <laughs> it was, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I got too much sleep. Okay. Um, <laughs> finally, a good thing. I finally slept a lot. So anyway, uh, yeah. So, and then, but that, that's a testament to you. you. You're paying attention. You're being present with that person. You mm. want to make those human connections. And for people who are introverted, Mm -hmm. And I just threw a giant birthday party for myself. And it was really fascinating watching the introverted people kind of stand off by themselves going, someone please talk to me or no one talk to me. Please don't (laughs) anyone talk to me or just one person talk to me. You know, I had 30 30 people shoved in my teeny little house. And what I did is I opened up the party by playing human bingo. I don't know if you've ever played that. I put a piece of paper, Willie's uh, California okay. native, yep. Yep. Uh, Arison, never traveled outside of the country, you know, that kind of thing. And you had to walk around and find people that fit that category. Couldn't repeat names, so you couldn't put Joe for everything. Um, but it got you meeting other people because these were people from all walks of my life. This wasn't just all trapeze folks or all massage clients or all girlfriends. I mean, this was people from every aspect of my life. And so many people complimented me on, I loved that game because it got us talking to other people. And Pay attention, ask questions, try to build that rapport. Okay, Jason, what's on your desk? All right, well, I'm going to do this one first today. It's Mr. Rogers, okay? And even he, if I push this little button here. I like to think of all kinds of helpers in our world. I like to think of all kinds of helpers in our world. He says like three or four different things, but why I have Mr. Rogers on my desk, I love Mr. Rogers. 
Okay. I grew up, I grew up watching him. Um, and, and there's some characteristics that he has that I want to emulate his kindness, his compassion and caring for people. I want to show up. I want that ego state to show up a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. And so having him on my desk reminds me of that. In fact, you know, one of my little morning rituals is I listen to some music and one of those songs is, it's such a good feeling to know you're alive, it's okay? Such a happy feeling, yeah. Aww. And so every day I get a little boost of Fred Rogers, mm -hmm. you know, with that. And um, another thing, you know, about, mm -hmm. about him is, as we've talked about ego states before, you know, and about stepping into or trying to, to get into that ego state. You know, if you watch the show, Mr. Rogers would come through the front door, right? In his, in his, you know, suit jacket, yeah. he would go to the closet. He would take off, right? His jacket, he would put on a sweater. Mm -hmm. He would go over, sit down, take off his dress shoes and put on sneakers. Yep. And so to me too, it's, it's a great reminder, like we've talked about before, of you know getting present trying to move into that ego state when he took off this the the jacket the yeah. suit jacket and put on the sweater he becomes mr rogers yeah. and so the ego states like we've been talking about i mean he physically did some things to yeah. get into that role and so again this is what we've been preaching for over a year now folks Here's, here's some things that you can do to try to show up that way. And so that's, that's why I have Mr. Rogers on my desk. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And I not only grew up watching Mr. Rogers, I grew up in Pittsburgh where it was yeah. filmed. And my father worked for and then eventually owned a paint store that provided all the theatrical paint to any movies and stuff that was happening in Pittsburgh. So guess who got to be uh, times on the set of Mr. Rogers? I did not know that about you. And this is so cool. This is one of my three truths and a lie thing. My first television appearance ever was on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I was one of the kids that fed the fish. Yes. No way. Okay. See? So now, I even... had auto autographed pictures <laughs> and I had like, oh my God. Yeah, because I mean, I grew up down the street essentially from where yeah. they were filming that and I got to pull the puppets and oh my God, it was like the coolest thing ever. And, you know, as a, as a little kid, you were just kind of like, uh, you know, because it's somebody <laughs> you see on TV and you're, I was probably four or five I mean like I don't couldn't even tell you how old I was but that experience stuck with me and I love Mr. Rogers and I I watched the documentary which was so moving to me yep. and you know it's just because it also takes me back home like when yep. they show the aerial the aerial shot of the neighborhood that's what I grew up with I mean that's what I yep. grew up with so uh, we well, need a, we need a Mr. Rogers right now definitely well and see uh, you know again for everybody who's listening right we've known each other we've been friends for two three years now at least mm -hmm. I did not know that about you now I do because we're having this conversation all because of, you know, my little Mr. Rogers that's sitting on my desk. Yep. Yep. Cool. cool. Okay. So I don't, um, hmm. it's interesting because some of the things I have on my desk, I just have because I like them, which is a fine reason to have things on your desk. But this one, <laughs> so this, where, I don't even know where the camera is on this thing. Where is the camera? Anyway, oh, that's uh, right there. we can see it. Yeah. So this is a little hamster, a little guinea pig kind of thing. And the reason I have this is, remember way back when we started doing this and we were filming at my office, um, I have a guinea pig named Listo, who is my little office pet. And people hold him and people find comfort and they pet him and they play with him and he squeaks at them. He's very talkative these days. And so a girlfriend of mine was walking through some store somewhere in the world saw this and went, oh, it's a little Listo. And so she went out of her way to buy this for me and give it to me. And it sits on my desk because here I don't have a Listo. I have my Listo at my office. But to me, this is a reminder, not only of my cute little fuzzy guy at the office, but it's a reminder that people think of me and that people know what I like and they get me because she knew I would love this little thing and it yep. has sat on my desk and she gave it to me. So it's just a reminder that there are people out there who are thinking of you. There are people out there who are there for you. So a lot of the stuff on my desk is just things people have given me, but it's a reminder that I am thought of, that I am cared about and that I'm important enough to people that I come to the forethought, forefront of their mind 
and they don't have to buy me things, but I mean, there's just a little token of the fact that she thought of there's, me, which yeah. I really appreciate, you know, and it makes me feel special and loved and appreciated and all that stuff. So. Well, and I think, you know, <laughs> with that too, you know, that it shows as well, there's, there's multiple meanings behind a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, you, you have Listo at, at work. Now you have a representation of him at home as well. So that that's, that's one benefit of it. But like you said, you know, it's, it's something that someone gave you yeah. as well. Right. So again, it, it means something to you because of that mm -hmm. as well. So oh, yeah. great. Cool. It's a little one. Okay. I'll do my next one next. Okay. So this is again, something somebody gave to me, uh, but it was before one of my surgeries. And it is an angel mm. that has Kathy on it. So it's one of those little customized things. The angel says, God bless. Um, she was a very spiritual person. She studied at Santa Monica University. Um, she did a lot of like transpersonal psychology and things like that. She was a very special client. She was probably one of my first clients. She moved away. We still keep in touch. But she gave this to me and said, this, is the, this, is, this represents the angel that's always looking over you. Mm -hmm. I don't you know, we all have different spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs. I'm not religious at all, but I am spiritual, but I have this hung on my, I have a, like a push pin board thing and this hangs on one of the push pins. And it's just, again, it's a, it's, it's always above me because it's higher than I am. So it is just a sort of representation of, um, you know, we do have protection. We do have, I believe we're, we're being, we're being looked out for and we are loved by the, we're children of the universe and we have that abundance and we have that, um, deserving of prosperity, abundance, love, joy, happiness, all those things. So this angel hovers above me and just reminds me that I'm divine. You are divine. There you go. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so my next one is, um, it's this little guy. It's a oh, little, nice. little, it's a little turtle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this is a, di this is a different turtle and it's, it's one that, um, it was an experience that I had that, that reminded me or, or now the turtle represents something different to me. Mm -hmm. So this, this turtle actually I got, I don't know, a long time ago. I think it was in, um, in Chinatown. In it looks like San one Francisco. of those sort of like stone kind so, of, I had one and I don't know yeah, where it is. Yeah. So it's, it's a little, it's a little turtle and he's standing on money. Yes. And so, and so there's actually some, you know, kind of from the, the Chinese tradition, there's some meaning behind that, but mm -hmm. But the reason that I, I, I've got boxes worth of little trinket stuff, and so I'll have to go through that as we keep doing more and more yeah, of these, I but, but I, I pulled it out and put it on my desk for a reason. It was, it was because of an experience that I had about a year ago, I guess, actually. So I, I, I signed up, I became part of a, of a new mastermind group. Okay. Okay. And I, and I went to the first, you know, the first in-person meeting that we had. And of course, again, I'm an introvert, right? <laughs> you were talking about those people at your party, you know, kind of standing around like, ooh, somebody talk to me. No, nobody talk to me, please, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. I was, I was probably kind of doing that at the beginning because mm -hmm. at first, until I get to know people, sometimes I'm a little apprehensive. Um, and, and I remember the, lead, the leader of the group, he told me as we, as we were talking, I was doing my hot seat because this, the, the, the second day I showed up a little differently. And again, this goes back to kind of the ego states, right? Mm -hmm. And and he told me, you know, during during the couple of days that we were there, he said, you know, the first day that you showed up, I saw you like this little turtle with your head stuck in the shell. And you didn't want to peek your head out, right? Because, you know, I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason you were trying to protect yourself and you didn't want to stick your little neck out. And, and that just kind of hit me. And so I, I, you know, I, I brought the turtle out of the box and put it back on my desk to remind me to be the turtle with the neck out. Right. And so to, to take those risks, to take those chances, to be myself, to show myself to the world, mm -hmm. instead of trying to hide away in my little shell. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's one that. Like I said, I'm pretty, it, it was either Chinatown in San Francisco or in New mm -hmm. York, but it was one of those two places that I got it. So it kind of reminds me of that trip, yeah. but, but more so now too, this has taken on a different meaning for me uh, because of that experience. And again, it's the reminder for me to be in the right ego state, stick my neck out, 
um, instead of being the little turtle up in the show. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Well, and it's also, it's not only the turtle sticking your neck out. There are some myths that believe that the world was formed on the back of a turtle. I don't remember what mythology system that is. There's also a certain, and the reason it's sitting on money is there's certain belief systems in Chinese spirituality that the turtle represents prosperity. There's also the whole tortoise and the hare thing yep. where it's about that slow and steady thing, which is where I thought you were going with that. I forgot about yeah. the go inside your shell thing because I tend to speed through stuff. You tend to go into your shell. So it's like one of those representations where yep. it can have different meanings to different people. Yep. Okay. We're running out of time again. All right, let's do your last one and then we'll... So my last one is this this little contraption here, which looks a little bit weird, you know, for everybody that's watching. Yeah, it's a so so what this is is it's actually it's a it's a grip exerciser, mm -hmm. but it's designed instead of like a, a tension ball, you know, where you just squeeze. Mm -hmm. It's got individual yeah. things that you can push with your fingers, and so you know, last time I think we talked about the fidget spinner. Mm -hmm. This is a similar kind of thing as the fidget spinner. So again, if I'm if I need to kind of you know, cross hemisphere myself, I can pick this up and start playing with it a little bit. Yep. But I do it with my left hand because this this device is actually built for people who play the guitar. Yeah. So that we can actually strengthen our fingers to be able to make it easier when playing the guitar. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually, you know, exercising my fingers in my hand as well. So this is kind of a multi-purpose uh, thing as well. And probably something that most of you don't have sitting on your desk. Right. That's really funny. Okay, cool. Okay. So I, I, I'm torn. Okay. So I have <clears throat> multiple cards. Now, why do I have multiple cards, including one from Penn and Teller? Uh -huh. um, I'm a huge fan of magic. I'm at the magic castle all the time. I am frequently called on to, Hey lady, pick a card. Uh, and so it got to the point where I was getting so many cards that I had signed and picked. And of course I always, here's a souvenir for you. And I'm thinking if you knew how many signed cards I had at home. <laughs> and when I started going to the castle, I kind of wish I would have kept them all because by this point I'd probably have a hundred. I've been going there for so long, but I have them taped to my desk. And the reason I do is it is a reminder to me of not only that thing that I love, but it's also about magic and transformation. It's a reminder to me that we can transmutate whatever we want into something different. There is this magic, there is this mystery, and it reminds me to go about things with newness, with fresh eyes, with that innocence of a child. It's one of the reasons I love magic is, you know, the older we get, the, the less we see the magic in the world, the less we're in awe of things. And one of my favorite things at the castle, because I know I've seen most of the tricks, I can tell you how most of the tricks are done, is to see other people watch that trick and go, <gasps> no way or holy shit you know it's like i love watching adults have that experience that i get every time i'm at the castle so that's why i have all these cards that are signed because it reminds me one of my one of my most favorite places in the world but also reminds me that the magic is afoot and that things are still mysterious and we can find the awe in everyday things well that's why we keep talking about magic too right on the, on the show in different points because it is there's there's that awe and wonder um, that, that really we should all be cultivating yep. and trying to have um, in our life every day. I mean, there's amazing, wonderful things happening all around us all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of things we can't explain because, you know, we don't understand how the tricks are done, just like we don't understand, you know, the in, in magic sometimes how the tricks are done. It, but, but, but even when you know how they're done, it's still amazing to watch the craft Oh, of, the, totally. of the magician performing it. Totally. So. Well, and so many people have said, oh, you've seen all the tricks. What do you keep going? Or isn't it boring? And it's like, one, it's, you get to the point of, I know how the trick is done, but I don't see them doing it, which is a testament to their skill. And the pattern is always different. Each person has a different character, a different way of getting into that trick. And yep. it's also a reminder of keeping things new. And I mean, we could do an entire show on magic, which I think we did. <laughs> We didn't, and I'm sure we will again. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anyway, hey, we've blown through our time, as always. Um, any final thought before we let everyone go to look at the things on their desk? No, I think that's probably it for today, because I'm sure we'll be doing this again. I'm sure we'll be doing this again. Excellent. I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. Go out, have a great week, and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. See ya. See ya.